Hello, my name is Nathan Childress, and I am the uh, developer of DoseLab Pro. I'm here to give you a quick overview of uh, both DoseLab and Fraction Check. Uh, both are software that uh, we've developed with Mobius Medical Systems, and uh, Sun Nuclear Corporation is the exclusive worldwide distributor. A lot of you may be familiar with DoseLab uh, from when I started it as an open source project when I was a PhD student at MD Anderson. Uh, that was something that really enjoyed doing. Uh, we did some basic dose comparisons. Uh, one of the reasons why I decided to quit clinical medical physics and start my own company was because I really enjoyed developing Dose Lab, but we didn't have the time to make it into a nice, polished, uh, professional product that had fewer bugs and all the features uh, that a clinical physicist really needed for a good tool. So I'm uh, very happy with the decision. Things have been going uh, very well. and. I'd like to tell you about what we've developed, which is DoseLab Pro and Fraction Check. So, um, what we've done is we've taken DoseLab and made it into a complete, fast, simple, and powerful software solution for all sorts of QA. Uh, here in the US, we follow AAPM's TG142 for LINAC and Imaging QA. It's a set of guidelines for um, all of our QA. Uh, DoseLab also does full film dosimetry, just like it started. It, we've added automatic dose comparisons for IMRTQA, and you'll see a quick little example of that. And we also do results organization and trend analysis. So because I'm a physicist, when we develop the software, every number this software generates, we should be able to set a tolerance on, we should be able to save it to a database, and trend it. And all that is built into DoseLab. All the routines use advanced image processing techniques, uh, so you get reliable and reproducible results. They're based on either EPID or film images. Um, none of the routines differentiate between if you used EPID or film, so it's um, very universal. Everything exports to PDF and Excel um, because it's a QA product and a big part of QA is documenting what you've done, so we made sure to make the documentation built into the software tool. And also here in the US, it's actually used by the RPC, the Radiological Physics Center, which does the um, auditing for about 2,000 sites in the US and some other countries um, for, uh, to certify them to perform radiation oncology research. So the LINAC QA components we have in DoseLab are star shots, Winston Lutz test, MLC strip test, the picket fence test, flattens and symmetry, which includes full field size and light radiation field coincidence, VMAT routine QA, and edge on PDD exposures. What's nice about these is that they're all uh, fully automatic, except star shots, you have to click twice there. Everything else is uh, basically zero click. You load the image, click go, and it gives you your results, tells you if anything failed your tolerances, and then it allows you to save a re report to the database uh, extremely quickly. We also have a full imaging QA suite. So in addition to all your machine QA, uh, you get all of your OBI or uh, KV QA, comb beam CT, MVCT. Uh, we're compatible with all of those. For our planar MV and KV imaging QA, uh, we support a lot of popular phantoms. Sun so Nuclear has their own phantoms. We also support standard imaging phantoms. We support the phantoms that come with your machine, the Leeds phantom, the Las Vegas phantom. And you can even add your own if what we have is uh, not in the list. We calculate the position and offset for IGRT alignment. That's very nice. You can use the same phantom for um, positioning and image quality. We calculate contrast and CNR, uniformity, spatial resolution, and image scaling. So it's a very complete solution in just basically one button click to load the tool. We do CT and comb beam CT QA. We support cat fan, GAMEX 464, SIRS, and again, custom phantoms if you if your phantom isn't on the list, you can manually add it. We calculate contrast and CNR, uniformity, HU deviation, spatial resolution, image scaling, geometric distortion, slice width. And again, all of this is fully automatic to where you just point into the directory that has your DICOM files of your CT scan, click OK, and everything else happens behind the scenes. So one of the most important parts is all of these tests have built-in uh, database support and tolerances. The internal database is very nice because it doesn't require any setup. You simply say, save this result, and it creates a new database if it has to, and then it shows you the results, gives you very quick and easy access to trending. Um, it also exports to Atlas, too. 
So if any clinic has Atlas either now or in the future, they can even take the last two years of results from DoseLabs database and export all those into Atlas. So um, you can choose to save them both Atlas and database or just one or the other. And now the DoseLab database also includes access to the original PDFs. So it's very convenient to save not only your uh, uh, numerical results for trending, but also your actual visual results that you see as soon as you're done with the test. Uh, the tolerances, uh, as you can see, you can set up a lot of different sets of tolerances for each of these tests and every parameter, you can change its baseline, its warning level, and its failure level. If anything uh, fails when you do a test, you get a pop-up, so it's very clear that something has gone wrong that you need to look at. Film dosimetry. Uh, we have a full film dosimetry package in DoseLab Pro. We convert film image, images to dose. We support fans with or without fiducials. Uh, we do Kodak EDR2 film and, of course, Gavchromic EVT2 and 3. And one of the things we really try to do is make film dosimetry as fast and accurate as possible. Um, our film calibrations are performed using wedges, either dynamic or physical. You can see it's a very quick and easy uh, calibration method. It's very fast to deliver the dose to the film. It's very fast to generate the curve in the software, and it's a fully automatic process. We support BIDAR and Epson scanners. We do uniformity corrections on both of those, one-dimensional for BIDAR, two-dimensional for Epson. And we do EBT2 and 3 blue channel corrections. And at the very end, we put on a, a wire filter to do uh, a little bit of noise reduction. Automatic comparisons are also very popular. Um, what we've done is we've taken the original Dose Lab dose comparison interface I developed um, almost 10 years ago now, and we've said, let's, let's see what we can do to make all these steps happen automatically. And we spent a lot of time, took a lot of IMRT QAs, and um, we're able to do all of these steps fully automatically. So when you start an automatic comparison, Dose Lab will flip and rotate the images, it will select your ROI, it will align the two images, and compare them to any fiducials that you have. It calculates the dose normalization, of course, gamma, DTA, percent difference, and that index. It extracts profiles for PDF reports. It stores the results for future display or analysis and PQI analytics, and it generates a PDF report. All of this in about five seconds. Another nice thing is that uh, we can actually do comparisons in batch. So if we do one comparison automatically in five seconds and we have an 11 field IMRT QA, that means we can put all 11 fields in there, do them all um, one by one in batch and be done in about one minute and have a PDF report uh, ready to import to our RNV system. This works with film, it works with map check, it works with matrix. Uh, PTW729, really just about any way you can measure dose is compatible with Dose Lab. And of course, it works with any treatment planning system. Dose Lab uh, can also come with Image Pro Phantoms. Uh, these are made by Sun Nuclear. Um, as I said earlier, these are not required, but they're extremely nice phantoms to where if your clinic needs phantoms, these are a very excellent choice. We have the MVQA Phantom, and that does all of your EPID image quality image scaling and alignment. A KVQA Phantom for KV image quality, scaling and alignment, they're very similar, just one for MV, one for KV. The Field Size QA Phantom is a nice little tool that has hash marks printed on there, so you can do your light field size measurements, and you can also do light radiation field coincidence because it has embedded BBs, uh, both for 10 by 10 and 15 by 15 fields. And then we have a Winston Lutz Phantom for SRS, SBRT, or IGRT alignment. So here you see there's the cube on the bottom right hand side. It has an embedded tungsten sphere in it. And this is very nice because you can use it as a normal Winston Lutz Phantom. Or you can actually do a CT scan of this, uh, treat it just like a patient, pull it into your planning system, contour the ball, um, treat that like your tumor, and then put that on your table and do a full cone beam CT. Uh, you see we have these offset alignment marks. Uh, this is really nice to where you can go in the room, align it to the offset marks, and then have your cone beam CT system bring the ball to isocenter, then take two MV images uh, to do a Winston Lutz test, and that will give you your complete end-to-end -end accuracy, uh, just like it were a patient, 
for um, how accurate you, you are in positioning your SRS or SBRT patients uh, using your cone beam CT system. So it's a very simple tool, but there's a lot of things that can be done with it. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about Fraction Check. Fraction Check is a uh, newer tool that we developed, and it fills a major gap in a lot of people's uh, QA programs. Um, right now, all of our conventional QA methods aren't verifying machine performance for actual treatments. Uh, we do a lot of machine QA, uh, but of course that's not patient specific, and it's you know every week or every month. We do per patient IMRT QA. Uh, that's usually just pre-treatment though. So we're gonna do a measurement before the patient starts treatment, but then uh, we assume that the rest of the fractions when the patient's under actually being treated are going well. Um, every day that the patient comes in, we'll do IGRT and patient positioning, and that's very patient specific, and that happens every day of treatment, but it's unrelated to machine performance. So, uh, you know, radiation oncology clinics now doing all of this QA, and uh, we're doing a really great job, most of it, but we still have this gap of the per fraction machine performance. And that's where fraction check comes in. It fills this gap, it gives you all four pieces of the pie, uh, but the really nice thing about it is that it uses machine logs and everything happens automatically. So again, if you notice as I'm talking, I'm, I'm a physicist, I know that we don't have all the time in the world in our clinic and we'd like to do as much QA in as little time as possible. And that's really how we design our products. We say, at how much time can we save with this product? And Fraction Check is really good uh, in this sense because what we do is we load treatment log files that are automatically created for every delivered field. Variant files create Dynalogs and trajectory logs automatically. Uh, Fraction Check launched with Variant support but in the next couple months, we're also going to support Electa. So we will have our own log file writing tool for Electa machines, and Fraction Check will work exactly the same way with Electa log files as with Varian log files. Now, these log files contain enormous amounts of machine performance data um, to where just looking at one of them usually contains several million, uh, hundreds of thousands to millions of results. And so what we have to do is we have to um, analyze all of those results apply password and fail tolerances to everything, and then give the physicist summaries of what happened and indicate if something warned or failed. Uh, so, you know, it does no good to pop up uh, these two million tests past everything. Uh, what Fraction Check is very good at is summarizing all this information. And of course, once we do that, we're performing uh, machine performance QA for every patient and every fraction they are treated. Uh, in just a couple of minutes. So when we say we load these files and check all sorts of parameters, what parameters are we actually checking? We're looking at the 95th percentile error in leaf positions. Uh, this should be less than three and a half millimeters per variant and also WAPM's TG142. Uh, three and a half millimeters is actually kind of a large value. Uh, we found that we can actually get this down and a better tolerance maybe around one millimeter for a lot of treatments. But we can also look at the RMS error in our leaf positions. And again, varying in TG142, say this should be less than three and a half millimeters. Uh, one of the unique things about Fraction Check is it calculates beam off lag time. And that means when the beam shuts off, uh, the varying log files have a nice feature where they say uh, the beam hold is asserted, and then you can actually count how long did it take from when variants asserted that beam hold to when that beam was actually shut off and time that. So this lets you know that if an interlock does occur, uh, your beam is shutting off on time. Now these first three things are all machine performance related. We're talking about positioning errors of MLCs, um, and, and they're all very good for machine QA, but they don't necessarily tell us what happened in our patient. Just because we have a two millimeter error and an MLC leaf, uh, what we do behind the scenes is we also calculate full fluences and a gamut passing rate of planned and delivered fluence calculations. So that takes it into actually translating all of these machine errors, adding them all up and saying, okay, what did that actually do to my patient's delivery? So here's the main interface of fraction check. Um, what we tried to do is uh, we show pass, warn, fail results. You can see the 
left box is red, so that indicates there's been a failure. And we try to show it very clearly. Uh, again, the MLC leaf map at the top shows that we had one leaf that failed. Uh, we have a plot. And so we have both the simple, you can look and see did things pass or fail um, using the color coded display at the top. And then of course we have access to advanced analysis at the bottom. We can filter and sort all of the files that are shown. You can see we have one line for every file. We summarize the results of each file. And once you find a file that uh, has bad results or you would like to see in detail more, you simply click on view details. So how does this work in the clinic? Um, it can be used for periodic QA. You can take your previous day's log files, you can load them into Fraction Check with two clicks, and it will go through, it processes, I believe about 250 fields a minute, and um, which is typically about the number of fields you're gonna deliver in one day. So in about one minute, it should pop up and say, all files passed. Um, this is something that's very simple. You can even have your therapist do that in about one minute a day. The other option we have is we can actually do continuous monitoring of your machine. You simply load Fraction Checks Treatment Monitor. Uh, now this does require, if you have a Varian 40 console, that uh, you have some way to automatically transfer those files from behind its firewall to your network drive. Um, and Varian's uh, sometimes come installed with PureSync, which accomplishes that. Uh, once that happens, we can monitor those files on our network drive and you open up the interface, click Start Monitoring, it begins. Every new fraction is checked as we're treating, and then any failure generates an email report. So your therapist will see that um, every time they deliver a new field, within about 10 seconds, this picture changes to what they last delivered, what it should have been, what it actually was delivered, and any differences. If you have any failures, you'll get an email within about uh, 10 or 20 seconds of when that machine failure occurred. You can also do a lot more detailed analysis. You can load a batch of log files, you can filter and sort, and then select uh, different desired graphs, view detailed results for individual fields. And these detailed field views, it shows delivery statistics, leaf position results, a gantry angle effect, beam status over time, uh, maximum and mean leaf speed. So uh, extremely advanced uh, analysis of every field you're delivering. Fluence comparisons, uh, this screen shows the planned and delivered fluences, the difference image, and a gamma image. So adding all that up, what can we actually do in the clinic uh, when we have a tool like Fraction Check? We can do a lot of QA and problem diagnosis. Because we have so much information, uh, it's actually a lot easier when we see a problem to figure out what went wrong and how we can fix it. Uh, one of the simplest things on varying machines is they have leaf motors, and you'll notice their RMS errors for individual leaves will start increasing and increasing as those motors go bad. So we've had uh, several clinics that have reported they've been able to replace those motors uh, before it caused a problem that the machine had to stop for. Uh, you can check your interlock responsiveness, again, how quickly your beam is shutting off, and look at your gantry effects on your MLC. Plan versus deliver delivery evaluation. If you have an IMRT QA that goes badly, you can pull it up in Fraction Check and see how much of that error was due to your machine delivery performance. You can look at and make sure that we have an appropriate dose rate. If you are having patient fields that are showing uh, fluence problems or MLC problems in Fraction Check, the most common solution is to lower the dose rate for that patient. You can look at the patient-specific summary of a treatment course. So we can generate this nice PDF report that shows um, the, that the delivery had consistent performance over an entire course of the patient's treatment. Long-term analysis for physicists that would like to see how their machines performed over months or years. A fraction check can handle, I believe, around 25,000 files. You can compare different techniques, VMAT, dynamic, step and shoot, and you can uh, compress your log data for archiving purposes. So some of the statistics of Fraction Check, again, we can load 25,000 fields at one time, process about 250 fields a minute, so this is a uh, very fast analysis and we're designed to handle thousands and thousands of fields at once. Everything is summarized into past, worn, or failed results. We generate graphs that update in real time when you sort and filter your results. 
We save a summary to the internal database and or atlas. The compressing log data results in files that are about 1% of the original size, so you don't have to throw away these Dynalog files that are just get massive. You can actually use fraction check to save the results, compress them, and um, bring them significantly down in size. And of course, we generate PDF reports for patients' treatment courses um, or for a custom analysis. So that is the summary of, of fraction check and dose lab. Um, you know, really, our overall goal has been to make QA as easy as possible for physicists and give you access to as many results um, as we can in a short time frame, have everything analyzed automatically, saved to a database, have custom tolerances enabled, and uh, give physicists a really nice software toolbox for all their image analysis and QA. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I'd like to thank everyone that's used uh, the open source version of Dose Lab. It's been very popular. I've been uh, very happy to extend that to uh, Dose Lab Pro and add in all of these new features and actually have a software development team uh, that's able to develop new features and test and make sure our software works uh, very well. So hopefully if you're viewing this video, I'll be able to come on and answer questions live in real time. So I'll uh, leave a few minutes for that and thank you very much.